Start with the juice. Uh, it was good, especially on offense. This is a guy that really through the first five days has just been grinding special teams offense, uh, walk on Billy Revere. You know, I love his toughness. He's really established himself as I think the leading guy at the tight end position and a lot of different things that we can do with him. Then on defense, we've been building Trey kind of back into it and uh, just his energy every time he hits the field as an amazing leader is just contagious. He had the big pick six, but he just gets us going. He's one of those juice guys, I think, almost every day that's really important to our football team. You, know, you mentioned Billy, and in regard to that tight end, I know Billy kind of his his profile coming in was it was as a blocker at North Dakota. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you kind of see it playing out? Is it going to be a situation where you maybe have a blocking tight end and a receiving tight end, or how does it kind of look like it's going to play out of that spot? We're trying to get more multiple with all of them, right? but we really do have a Y and an H, and that's kind of how we talk about them. And Billy's more that Y guy, inline mover, kick out. We'll move them around. Uh, Moon's doing a lot of that type of stuff, and then Coop and Cam. Uh, are doing more of the H stuff, and Andre's kind of doing a little bit of both, right? So we're hoping he can continue to elevate his game as he progresses. He's still a freshman, uh, still getting him out there doing some things, but uh, it's good to have a physical presence at tight end, and Billy is very natural for him. It felt like, uh, you know, seven on seven was all offense. I think there was only a couple incompletions, and it felt like when it went to team period, it was all defense. Um, what did you kind of know? Did you kind of notice something similar, and what maybe kind of uh, was the reason for the, the disparity? Well, I think the biggest thing in today was third down emphasis day, all the way from fast start, right, to kick practice off all the way to the end. So uh, I, I know this. Our defensive package is a lot, especially on third down, right? So when you see some of that stuff in seven on seven, you got a little more time than you do in team. Um, but all that stuff to see it too takes the offense just a little bit to get comfortable, get going, know where their IDs are in protection. So uh, I expect our guys to, to rebound tomorrow and uh, you know kind of come back really strong. Talked a lot about uh, you know Cam Ward's developing leadership, but just kind of in terms of his composure, what have you liked from, that you've seen from him? Just you know considering all the eyes and publicity and the responsibility that that he's got on his shoulders. Cam loves it. He's born for it. You know, I, I really I really believe that when you get around him a lot and you really do get a chance to sit down and talk to him, he lives for the moment. And, uh, you know, all the little details that we've been talking about, how he carries himself, how he understands his voice matters and everything he does, and just seeing him take those steps, you know. How, how you run off the field matters, you know, especially when you're the leader and you have that much and many eyeballs on you. So I've been happy with Cam. I've been happy with his development, and he doesn't make excuses. You know, and he takes a lot of ownership on himself, right? So he expects to play at a high level, and he holds him to the, himself that every day. Now it's just getting the right blend of how many looks he needs versus some of those other guys. Who's standing out to you in terms of the backup slots and outside receivers? Because I'm guessing you want to have like, you know, seven, eight. Yeah, ready. we want to be eight deep. Uh, we want to be able to roll those guys in just with a lot more tempo of the offense. You know, I think the biggest one is Orion Peters. And, I, you know, it's hard to even call him a backup at this point. You know, he's really established himself as a guy that we're going to really rely and count on. Uh, you know, Lincoln's been a little bit limited. Uh, by week three, he'll be full go. Um, you know, Leighton Smithson, let's, let's not count him out as a guy that might be rotating in and doing some things. And then on the outside, we're just waiting for those guys to still, you know, make some plays down the field. And I think Strib has that capability, Don does, and uh, Zion, right? So I want to see those three big boy receivers come to play on the edge. And that's a daily process and still waiting to see those guys win on some balls down the field. So it'll be a big rotation when we get Robbie Farrell back. He knows this offense. He'll immediately be inserted as a guy that can come in and, and take some reps and function at a high level. What is it that uh, Adrian Shepard's done to kind of, you know, get these starting out with the first unit on, in a lot of these practices? I'm proud of Shep. He's changed his mentality, you know, and I think uh, the more maturity that you have in the defensive secondary, the better it can be. So he's taking a really good step in that direction. We can continue to grow. I love his versatility and he loves the noise, you know, and I think he had a really, really good summer. You know, not just here, but in the film room and craving coaching. So he's done a good job. You know, this will be a rotational deal. That scrimmage for him. Uh, and Sam and Jaden and, and to be the first guy out there will be a big kind of measuring stick after Saturday. So I don't take a lot of personal stock in it right now, um, but as we continue to go, um, you know, that, that's when we'll really see who's going to be out there. Kind of same question for Jordan Lee as he kind of cemented himself as yeah, a Yeah, I mean, I think Jordan, you know, we're just got to make sure we're limiting Jordan. You know, because remember, Jaden Hicks is still, uh, you know, a redshirt freshman. So we want to pump Jaden with as many uh, reps as he can get right now, but make no mistake about it. 
Jaden Hicks and Jordan Lee will be on the field, right, in some capacity. Those four guys will really be contributing. It just won't be one person taking 80 reps. So they all have to be ready for when their number's called. Got to ask uh, the, the sideline guys, any update on those on those guys? Today? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, feel comfortable that Make, uh, lower leg injury, will be back uh, for the first game. You know, it'll be a uh, progress as we keep working, you know, hopefully get them out of a boot here next week and get them rolling back through some some light stuff as we work them towards the first game. And, you know, Ram, we feel pretty confident it's kind of in the same, same boat. Um, we're still kind of on some of the other guys waiting through some stuff. Yeah, coach. So I know that you've like coached at some rural schools, such as like North Dakota, South Dakota, other coach, uh, other schools, just to name a few. Uh, what what makes WCU or Pullman different compared to those schools? Well, some of those other schools, other South Dakota State, they had cows on campus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we we're talking about rural. Uh, I think it's very similar, right? Small town, big college. It's kind of the heartbeat of the area in the region. Uh, and like I said, I think the people are really, really invested. You know, I think that's what you get in these type of environments. People feel really connected to the program. And I think that's a powerful thing because, you know, that means the brand of Washington State, wherever they go in life, is very strong. And so what's your feeling on the Palouse itself and what surrounds it? Is it anything like Uncanto, Wisconsin? <laughs> oh, Conto, Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, Conto would be proud of me just mentioning their name. No, it's, it's not. Uh, that's right on the bay. It's like a little fishing community uh, just north of Green Bay. And, you know, here's a little bit more agriculture and the rolling hills of wheat. So, but it is very rural, right? A lot more cows where I come from, you know, than I see kind of around these areas. But, uh, you know, as far as people, good people, tough working people, people with a lot of grit and blue collar, and, and that's kind of my nature too. Yeah, and are there any particular programs or coaches that you looked up to as a younger coach? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I always say I'm shaped by Craig Bowl. You know, that toughness, that mentality. Um, I wouldn't be here without Craig Bowl, right? And I think that's point blank. The other one is Tim Polisek, and he's now the offensive coordinator at Wyoming. Uh, Tim was in my wedding, uh, but he coached me at UW Stevens Point, and I'm only standing here because of Tim Polisek. He got me my first GA job up at North Dakota State, and uh, we just haven't really overlapped enough coaching. We've always wanted to. Uh, but he's a special person in my life, and I wouldn't be here without him. What are you looking to happen this season for success uh, for your team? To create success, yeah. you're saying? Yeah. Uh, just consistency. Like, and I talked to the guys about creating habits after practice, right? After an off day, here comes Monday, 24 periods, half pads, a little hotter, right? You create those habits, period one, but you cement those habits, periods 21 through 24, right? That strain to finish, right? And I, the biggest thing I talked to those guys about you're straining so the guy to your right and your left trusts you in the fourth quarter out on Giza Field, period. Right? So that's how we're going to win a lot of football games. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. I appreciate it.